Hi, I'm Arthur Bueno, and you're watching the Bueno Power Vlog. Alright, it is Monday. I am going to be picking up a tar that I had put on layaway so I can actually uh, go in, pick it up without having to rush and hopefully today I can enjoy my guitar and, and that'd be that so let's go uh, let's go to Guitar Center. thing home this is the J Mascus jazz master uh, uh, made by Squire and I gotta I gotta admit um, Squire has been actually doing some pretty good work uh, with their guitars and I've never uh, played a Squire jazz master before uh, let alone uh, play a jazz master that I was uh, so comfortable with so the story goes is that I was going to go order the Epiphone ES339, right? I was waiting around, and uh, you know, the people that were at the the, the desk uh, handling other customers at the guitar department, um, you know, doing their thing pretty chaotic. So, I had all the money, I was prepared, right? And then I, um, I picked this guitar up out of curiosity, because one thing's for sure, Fender guitars, I, I, I've always, I, I like them, but I never knew how to use them. Especially the Strats, especially the Telecasters. And in my line of playing, um, and being a Gibson player all these years, um, I've had such an attachment with Gibson and the way how it handled. Um, and I think that most Gibson players can probably um, understand where I'm coming from in the aspect where uh, a lot of the things that we play on Gibsons, uh, we, we had to play a little tighter. And, uh, excuse me. And so, uh, some of the notes that uh, and scales that we, that we um, you know, uh, hit, um, we, we have to be uh, pretty precise about them. Otherwise, it, it, it sounds a little sloppy. Um, and for most uh, guitarists that play Fenders and uh, in that realm of Stratocasters and Telecasters, um, they have a little bit of room to kind of like mess up a bit. Um, it, it doesn't get get noticed. I, I may be speaking crazy right now for some musicians that own a Fender and own a Gibson and uh, totally think I'm a liar, but that's kind of how I perceive it. <laughs> that's that's the kind of the weird thing but I was never good at playing with Telecasters or Stratocasters because of that reason so that you know I'm not a loose player uh, I like to actually play a little tighter on my scales and on my chords so um, again you know trying to um, you know get an ES339 um, and I remember it's the Epiphone version I can't afford the Gibson version it's like a thousand something bucks um, 
I picked this one up and I just started playing with it and decided, you know what, let me just give this one a shot. Um, you know, I already own uh, uh, a bold sounding instrument. Maybe I should try to go a little higher in. And I do have a Fender. Um, it's back in California. I just never used it. And the reason is because I, 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 the Stratocaster is the fat strat. It's a good sounding guitar, but the way how I play it, it, it just didn't, I, I didn't really have a relationship with it. So when I picked this guitar up and wanted to start and play uh, some scales and some chords, I noticed that there was this like weird kind of a, a similarity to the Jazzmaster and my Gibson. And not to mention that, like, you know, it's it's a higher end sound. Uh, the guitar uh, is a little hotter um, in, in the gain, and especially on you know the the clean you know sounds. So I, I told myself, you know what? Let me give this thing a shot, and if I don't like it, I can always return it. And sure enough, you know, I uh, I I grown to, to like it. I, I picked it up earlier this week and here's a couple of reasons why I think I became so attached to it. So uh, one of the reasons is the look. You got a off-white body and you got a gold-plated pickguard. And I can't tell you enough when when I looked at it it stood out to me the most because it was the only guitar that did not look the same out of all the guitars that I seen in the wall um, second of all the price the price was too good uh, they had like this sale a guitar center where they knocked up a hundred bucks from the original price it was like 340 incredible deal right and I said you know what let me let me uh I, I can afford this let me go and get it and so, you know, putting the layaway and such, um, you know, I, and when I got the guitar earlier this week, kind of just started like, you know, kind of messing around with it. And uh, again, the body was what attracted to me, but it's not only that, um, it's the handling. And I think that with how I handle uh, playing a Gibson, it has this weird similarity that that I have playing with this Jazzmaster. Uh, this Jazzmaster seems to have um, sort of the same size frets as my Gibson. I might be wrong, or I could be totally wrong. Uh, the neck is a little fatter. Um, not only that, it, it uh, you know, the action is really close to the frets. This is actually the most comfortable guitar I've played out of all the guitars in Guitar Center. And for some of you uh, like that shop there you know what I'm talking about it, it, it gets really bad so yeah I, I ended up you know just figuring out a, a, a way to kind of handle this guitar like it was my Gibson and it it uh it became apparent as, as I was playing is that like I would play the same things I would play in my Gibson Les Paul onto this Jazzmaster um, so the handling is is where it, it, it kind of drew me in even further into it. And not only that, like, the guitar has about four different tonalities. Your treble, or well, in this instance, this is your, your, your bridge pickup, middle position, and neck pickup, and then a different tonality on the neck pickup. So uh, on this position, uh, it's a lot fatter on, on a... On a on the neck pickup then uh, you know uh, uh, this position at least and uh, this one has a little bit more higher end uh, and this position is a little bit more fatter um, you can also uh, make this into a kill switch and you know looking at this I, I was kind of like what do I do with this part of the guitar and, and I realized this was the volume knob and this is a tone knob and uh, you know, it was actually just today that I, I kind of tweaked around the wires because it was giving me some problems it wasn't actually um, operating correctly so those are some of the things that sort of attracted me to this uh, guitar and I couldn't believe that I I bought it uh, kind of just having this weird relationship with this 
guitar. There was this energy to it that um, I couldn't really describe. Now, I know I'm acting crazy, <laughs> uh, just considering how, like, uh, you know, maybe, maybe if you are a musician and you're a gearhead like me, you would understand. Um, I don't go for Fenders, you know, that's not my first guitar that I go to. I usually go with the bolder sounding instruments, the hollow bodies, you know, that sort of thing. But this right here, um, it totally changed my perspective on uh, Fender and Squire even uh, as a whole. And uh, I've noticed that the production on the Squires have been uh, pretty, pretty fantastic. And this kind of goes to show that, like, you know, uh, times are really changing for some of these companies. And they're really stepping up their game as far as, you know, uh, what, you know, what, the amount of quality they need to put into their, to their, uh, to their instrument in order for them to make sales. Um, Mike Gibson Les Paul, though that it was a, a pretty affordable price, it's a light guitar and it plays great. And it's still alive. I mean, I still need to tune it up. It's still alive all, after all these years. Nothing is broken. You know, the wiring, you'd have to replace the wiring someday, and, and I had to do that. But, I mean, come on, you know, like, this is a great guitar. This is one of my favorite guitars I ever played. And um, I don't think I need to buy another one. I don't think I need to buy another guitar. I, I'm set up. And um, the thing is that there's just been this crazy resurgence of the Jazz Masters, the Jaguars, and um, they... And the other uh, brand uh, or at least a uh, model type of guitar that's kind of uh, coming back into the mainstream Yeah, these these guys weren't really uh, that popular of guitar, you know for some crazy reason, but um, It's starting to come back and it's starting to become uh, back in style and I think that this is something that um, You know we well, for me, at least I recognize, and, and I wasn't really trying to be trendy about, you know, buying this uh, piece of gear, but this is something that I, I kind of underappreciated, and I think that that's what I like about it. It's like an underappreciated model guitar that's now gaining more popularity. Um, much like with people that were playing with Gibsons, um, you know, a lot of people were playing with Stratocasters and Tellys and stuff, and, you know, they saw somebody playing a Gibson, and they were just totally hooked, you know. Um, for me, uh, you know, I will forever be a Gibson player, but I gotta tell you that playing this guitar has really um, sort of opened my eyes to uh, different tonalities and how I uh, work certain scales and whatnot. And it, you know my love for for the Gibsons is never gonna go away and now it's just that I'm broadening my horizons and starting to understand that you know sometimes you gotta try some some new things in order for you to kind of uh, discover some, some new t tonalities and maybe even new like you know riffage you know so not to say that gear is gonna help you like become a better player but you know once you get to that point where you kind of know your place on the on the neck and, and on sound it's always nice to have something different so yeah uh, you know to to squire uh, I gotta tell you guys you guys or Fender, Fender rather this is an incredible piece of, of gear um, it does not feel cheap whatsoever uh, to me at least and you know, compared to all the guitars that I've played, I've never played anything more comfortable than this Jazzmaster. So, whatever you guys are doing, keep it up, because you're going to make a lot of people happy. <clears throat> and that about wraps it up for this uh, vlog. Uh, really, the, the only adventure I had this week was to uh, purchase that guitar, but you can tell how stoked I am uh, for it. Um, so, yeah, if you uh, like this video, um, hit the like button, and if you want videos every Monday, uh, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and, uh, as always, thank you for watching the Bueno Power Vlog.